I'd like to know what's the difference between the New Age and the Aquarian Age? Is it is it the same thing? <laughs> How interesting. I hope you don't stump me on the opening <laughs> question. <laughs> but it's an interesting one. coverage, so to speak. If you call the Aquarian Age, and to me it's, the, uh, it's, a, it's an epoch uh, that the world has moved into, mm. and our civilization is moving through, and uh, it expresses itself in all these forms that we call New Age. Aquarian age, after all, is the age of melting of barriers. Mm. It's the um, age of Aquarius, the water barrier, the dissolving of, uh, of barriers. And um, so that uh, much of the old structure that came with the previous age, the old social structures have gone. Think mm. what our great-grandfathers in that, that society and structures mm. uh, yeah. uh, far more rigid yeah. and we can now do anything. Yeah. Things are all, the barriers are all melted yeah. between people and all. And um, out of that melting appears this movement which we call New Age. which is really exploring values and attitudes and relationships with a new freedom. So one's come out of the other? Yes. And the new age is an expression, is the way that our society is expressing itself in the Aquarian age. Oh, I see. The Aquarian age, Aquarius, under that um, astrological sign is the area of the melting of the barriers. Mm. Now that's a, a big um, cosmic age, so to speak. And we, in that age, naturally that melting of the barriers shows itself in the breakdown of so much uh, the a new freedom that comes, new relationships between people, a new ease, a new, uh, and every aspect of life. And are we at the beginning of it, of the Aquarian Age? Has it has it just started, or has it been been going? It's not it's not in full swing yet, is it? Or. That's stupid in me. I can't remember when they actually astrologically date yeah. uh, the age of Aquarius beginning. I ought to be able to give you that. No, I was just, I was interested, right. like, the, the date when the 1980, August 1987, was that the time when the planets lined up and that was... Oh, that was, yeah. a, that was a strange time. Yeah. Something really happened at that time yeah. and uh, uh, the I, I Aquarian was... age is a big astrological epoch right. and insofar as there is truth behind this all it then expresses itself in social forms or the changing of social forms and uh, the easing of our relationships, the new flow, the melting of barriers, mm. 
the possibility of your coming and visiting me in a, a shed like that and being <laughs> uh, which a generation ago you wouldn't have done. You would have put on a tie and he still <laughs> free. put on a black tie and look smart. And, say, yeah. uh, but he lets his tie go loose like that, so it's all, all free and easy. It's all typical of it. Uh, and so that the Aquarian age is very, the, um, the new age, yes, is a breaking into potential of a new life form through dissolving of barriers, but through energies flowing, creative energies flowing, which are manifesting in um, all sorts of exciting things. I mean, the books that are being written, mm. the, uh, the quantity of the New Age books among these things here, there, the, and, uh, and list of books coming out. Mm. Uh, people are writing and thinking and changing. Mm. And it's quite true, the barriers are melting and, then, and we are forming a new vision of what life is about. And of course, the great breakdown, breakthrough is, to my mind, that we're realizing what holism truly means. Holism is the note of the time, spelt W-H-O-L-I-S-M, or H-O-L, in other words, wholeness and holiness mm. turn out to be very closely related to each mm. other. And we're realizing that the we're going through a time when the melting of the old social structures, the breakdown of financial systems are all getting much poorer, mostly, and much freer mm. in the relationships and um, of all sorts. And out of it then is emerging the excitement of the new age in which holism is recognizing that the earth not only is earth one, but that earth is truly a living being a creature mm. and uh, it's a very limited form of holistic thinking merely to talk about how nature all relates and that sort of thing mm. but to realize that earth the planet earth is a wonderful being which is spiritual as well as physical bringing the spiritual into it, which is so important. Lifting out of the materialism of the last generation into seeing that um, the whole is holy. That there is being in everything. There are beings, higher levels of consciousness. Or I would put it this way, that um, until now we've assumed, well, body, this at least is real, we know, and quite obviously we're real, and then is it possible that you have something in you which survives? Is there or is there not an immortal soul, or can you contact, is there a higher world about this world? Now the great turnabout I think that's coming is that, um, to realize that the eternal thing is that which looks out of your eyes into mine and that we are encased in this, can I say, temple structure is a being, a spiritual being. That's what man is, looking out of your eyes 
take this supposition that we, the thing in you and me that can say I am, is an immortal, eternal, spiritual entity, a spiritual being. And that humanity, a little lower than the angels, but crowned with glory and honor, we are the tenth hierarchy, a little lower than the angels. And God says, let us make man after our own image. Male, female, made he them. We are the, in the image of God. In other words, the creator is essentially the same as, as us. The, a being of thought, a being of heart, love, emotion, and dynamic action. Thinking, feeling, willing, a head system, a heart system, a limb system. This is a structure, a dynamic structure, a wonderfully designed temple. What is a temple? A temple is a, an architectural structure which can be filled with spiritual being. And the great churches, above all the great Gothic churches, are just the same picture as man. You think, lay a man out like this, and you've got the seven major chakras, mm. the root chakra, the uh, sacral, the solar plexus, the heart, mm. the throat, the brow, mm. the crown, the seven ones, are there in the Gothic church. At the west end you've got the, the root, the sacral, the creative part here, where incidentally the baptismal font is as a symbol, and uh, the sacral centre up the aisle, and at the great crossing of the cathedral, the heart, and next to it, the throat center, where is the pulpit from which the word is given out. Sermons are given. And then the altar is the brow chakra. And beyond that, crowning it all, is the, the Lady Chapel. Our whole Gothic cathedral is the image of spiritual man in this form. And then to realize that that in you which can say I am is an immortal, indestructible divine droplet belonging to a spiritual world. And that the tenth hierarchy, man, there are the nine great angelic hierarchies, the tenth hierarchy, the human kingdom, of which God says, let us make man after our own image. And the essence of this planet that he's given us is that this is a planet of freedom. A very important point is, the angelic world doesn't want freedom. It isn't interested, it just obeys the will of God. It's part of the will of God. But it's as if having finished creation, he says, well, look here, let's have some more fun. Let's make another hierarchy, a little lower than the angels, and we give them something the angels aren't interested in. We'll give them free will. We give them planet Earth, this wonderful planet, and we let them loose on it and see what they do and see how soon they'll come back to me, God. <laughs> Can you get the picture there? And of course, let loose into it, we flounder around, around with our greed and our excitement. <laughs> we murder somebody and we're awfully pleased, we rob somebody, we get a lot of money, we do all sorts of things. And then when we pass on, we come up to the heavens and we discover, but good Lord, I murdered that man. I took that man's life. My own development is held back by the fact that I killed another human being. Good Lord, I, this is really a black mark against me and what I've got to do is to go back again and find that soul that I killed and make it up to him somehow. And so I, I reincarnate a couple of centuries later, perhaps
perhaps I murdered you in the, in the 15th century. I come back again, and in the 17th century, and I find you again. And our angel guides stage a situation in which I make some sacrifice in a critical situation in which I save your life, but I lose mine in, the, in doing it. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yeah. And huh. that could well be a thing comically planned. And so when I come back again, they can say, fine, you wiped out that earlier thing now, and now you could go ahead. It gives the earth this, this extraordinary school, training ground, theater, for the human kingdom learning to use freedom and ultimately going through all sorts of troubles out of greed and avarice and fear and everything and therefore incarnating again and again until it gets to a point when it says look There's something much more exciting than merely getting rich, merely getting power, <laughs> uh, whatever it may be. I can, in fact, become a co-creator with God. The ultimate aim, very small way there, is I become part of the whole great creative pattern that Earth is bringing to birth out of its freedom is bringing to birth creatures who are divine in their nature but are exercising free choice and free will which as I say the angelic world isn't it interested in because they simply obey mm -hmm. but we are different mm -hmm. and we're coming to the point now at the end of an epoch incidentally so we better do it in a hurry very quickly uh, waking up to the fact that we are immortal spiritual beings housed in a temporal body. It's the other way around. It isn't that this is real. This is real. The thing that looks out of your eyes into mine is an immortal, indestructible, eternal being on a long education. And it's a very exciting point because we are at the end of an epoch uh, more with the turn of the century, more or less. And therefore we've got to wake up as much as we can before the end of the epoch and uh, uh, come back to God as a co-creator. The whole creative, artistic, dynamic aspect of human life is going to be lifted. And we've got to wake up pretty quickly because uh, changes may begin to happen in the earth uh, in the next in the next years. But it's all right if we if we can make our contact with what are ultimately the Christ sources, the Christ source, the Christ impulse, and our own angelic beings and working for the coming of the love. When I mention Christ, now the trouble, am I right in burping on like this? No, that's, that's, that's fine. Yeah, Break in, as you like. I was, was going to say, you're talking about karma, um, and I noticed you had written a for, well, not a foreword, but you, you seconded, a, there's a book, The Cosmic Dance and The Wind of Change. And yes. Now, the, the lady there, said something about Hitler being reincarnated into the soul of a small child or girl in South America and to me that didn't sound like he was you know for what he had done was was a sort of um, I don't know it wasn't how can I put it Hasn't been pushed into the. Hasn't been put into a, yes, hasn't been put into a situation. <laughs> You've got to be very careful about being too exact, <clears throat> yeah. because it's a very difficult thing to know. Clearly, yeah. I have heard it said what I felt. I felt was interesting. 
uh, that a realization that the soul of Hitler has not yet woken up. Mm. He's still sleeping. Mm. Which is quite unnatural by now. It ought to be looking for its new reincarnation. But that that man has built such a load of karma, has created such a cosmic debt against humanity, that the soul isn't able to face the implications. And it's still sleeping. And the time will come when it has got some time to come and think what it's got to face. If broadly speaking, what we have to do in the next incarnation is to wipe off the karma, the things we did wrong, yeah. the damage to others, and make it up to them. Just conceive of the load on that soul. And it just can't face it, so it prefers to go on sleeping. So, George, you mentioned that Gothic cathedrals were built on, on the a pattern of the um, system of the human body. Yes. Uh, now, uh, most of these cathedrals, they also have a thing which is in the shape of a rose. A what? Uh, in a shape, shall we say, a window that looks the like... The rose window. A rose window. Uh, that has been uh, also most of the Indian women. They have a, a, a bit of a touch of uh, uh, red uh, crimson uh, uh, on the forehead, yes. including all the statues of Buddhas and so on and so forth. Yes. Um, uh, there are quite a few books written also uh, that the entry into the kingdom of God is through the third eye. I'm talking about the third eye. Of course. Um, how do you see this process? We were just talking before we came here whether our understanding of the spiritual world is purely through the intellectual uh, uh, exercise and uh, um, how uh, do we achieve these revelations and insights which we after, after later on intellectualize. Now, could you say a few words, how do you see this process, the method of entering into third eye or discovering third eye? Because we don't physically, uh, physically there is no such a thing. Right. How, how, do, you, uh, how do you perceive this? Uh, um, uh, in, your, in your life, do, do you make any use of it? Do you, do you exercise it in any way? This is a discovery, this is an exploration, this is a, a, I think we're all challenged at this time, at the end of an epoch, and we are clearly coming in some sense to the end of an epoch, round about the turn of the century, in the later part of our lifetimes, so there can well be changes. If you only see it physically, they could be rather frightening. I mean, there could be earth changes, land sinking, lands rising, and that sort of thing. A lot of people will lose their bodies. But, now, the first thing is that you are not your body. That's why it's so important. If a lot of people are going to be washed out or drowned out or crashed out, uh, it's a great advantage. They are not killed. Their bodies are killed. What the news would say is that um, in such a such a volcano or earthquake, 20,000 people were killed. The truth is 20,000 souls were released from their bodies by that earthquake. Quite a different picture. And that soul, that spiritual aspect of the man, is to be seen as something immortal, which just cannot be killed. And so that we really belong to that spiritual plane. And this earth is a school, a training school, by the fact that coming down and taking over this temple of a body, slowing down the pace of movement and thought and exchange, gives us a 
possibility of a training and new understanding, but we now need to sit together and converse in this slow manner like that, as opposed to being spiritual beings which just instantly blend and blend in consciousness and higher consciousness. You see the earth as the school which we've come into temporarily for a spell of time. Out of eternity, what is three score years and ten or whatever, or however long you choose to live. We come into it, and why it's, this is all so exciting now is that we do appear to be coming to an end period of some sort. And a solely material thinker would see chain, earth changes coming, which of course would mean that a lot of people will lose their lives. But that's a very inadequate explanation. There's something much more than that. Because really what's coming is the end of an epoch when I mistake the jump now and say, which is really the period of the second coming. Now, it's the flooding of the Christ power that is the really exciting thing. Now, here we have to make the trouble is that people have so associated Christ with Jesus, Jesus Christ. The moment you mention Christ, you think you're talking about Jesus Christ. Mm. The true picture, which is really what Steiner first revealed, is that it's wrong to say that Jesus Christ was born on Christmas Day. Jesus was born as the baby on Christmas Day. Not until the age of 30, when at the baptism on Jordan, did the great event happen. And the cosmic being of the Christ who is really the heart principle and the heart love of the Creator. That vast being of love came down and experienced what it was to live as a human being for three years. That's yeah, why the Gospel of three years. Only three years. From the baptism on Jordan, where the Holy Ghost descended in the form of a dove, symbolically there, what, and remember that the Gospel of John only begins at the baptism. All the earlier stuff isn't there at all. Because that is the important thing that the personality of Jesus stood down and made way for the entry of the Christ, who is not Jesus. The Christ is the whole heart principle of the Creator, of God, His vast being. And that came down and for three years lived and spoke as a human being. That's why John only takes, takes those three years. For you to say that now, if you say you were back in a few centuries ago, if you were to say that a few centuries ago, would you have been persecuted for saying well, that? I should have been burnt, of course. Absolutely. Well, it is a wonderful... It's heresy. Of course it is. <laughs> yeah, but it is a wonderful heresy. It's very true. It's absolutely true. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It appeal, appeals, doesn't yes. it? I mean, I, I looked at it a million times, but I didn't notice it. You pointed it out, and it was immediately, immediately, absolutely there. Exactly. Look, dear friend, the wonderful thing here, that... You don't have to prove these things. You see, the cynical mind, the left hemisphere, will say, oh, come off it, you can't prove that. Well, that's his no, job, that's his I job, can't isn't prove it? it. It's the ego's job to... I'm, and I'm not looking <laughs> with that hemisphere. We're looking with the right hemisphere of the brain, which is the sensitive, intuitive power that is in direct touch with the higher world. Mm. And that... The critical left hemisphere, of course, tries to rationalize and must have it proved. You don't need it proved. There is something in us, as you say, you something in you responds to this idea, doesn't it? 
Oh, absolutely. That is a ooh, I love it. I, I can see it now that you have pointed out, and yet I have read many times uh, St. John. It never occurred to me, uh, I never noticed it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I never discovered it for myself. You discovered it for me. Good. Yeah. Well, now, take that, and this is a very important thing. I'm not asking belief. You haven't got to believe that. It isn't necessary. You are invited to think. Mm. We respond to this because freed of any rationing, but can I believe that? Can you? You can't prove that. Of course I can't prove that. But you can live it. The answer is that you can take these living ideas and, if you like them, don't if you don't like them, if you don't care for them, if you do like them, like them, well, live them and see where it gets you to. I've given you that now that you are from now on a, an immortal spiritual entity inhabiting this beautifully designed body temple which lasts you for three score years and ten or a hundred years or whatever. But, and then you discard it. But you have gone through the experiences of freedom, of being given freedom of choice. You floundered through probably life after life, creating damage, creating bad karma. But what's happening now, and why this is intensely exciting, is that to the end of this epoch, so is a coming to the point of stopping and saying, but good heavens, I don't want all that. What matters is that I go back to God in freedom. I can ultimately become a co-creator with God. I've been let loose into this realm of, as an immortal, immortal, that means I got to it's thousands of years ahead. It'll be thousands of years apart. No hurry. But we'll be let go through the earth, probably from the last 30,000 years. We've gone through the experience, and we're now coming to the point that we're suddenly seeing, look, drop all that. I am a little bit of God. And Christ is not what was born on Christmas Day. That was Jesus 2,000 years ago. The Christ is the love, heart love of the Creator. Remember, we are made in God's image. Thinking, thinking feeling and loving, and dynamic action. Well, dynamic action now is that love is being loosed into the planet like a rising tide. That phrase hit me that, that really the, the great phenomenon of our age is the rising tide of love. Take that. Remember in all this thinking there is no need to prove it. I can't prove any of these things. Mm. But we're doing, but we're talking right hemisphere, not left hemisphere, which demands proof. Now, if you like the idea, and mm. let me get to the end of this phrase, this um, if you like the idea, that's the test. Something in you says, cool, yes, yes, ooh, that's exciting. Now, watch that. Something in you that rises, and you're lifted of any obligation to prove it. We are a the we in us, the being in us, is, is God, is a droplet of God, and it is coming back to God, and it is taking into itself, it's a being of love. The great thing of our age is this rising tide of love flooding the earth 
Now, I, I, you can't prove. Reject the idea if you don't like it, but if you do like it, look at it. It's flowing through us. And what is love? Love is Christ. Christ is the heart love of God. And we've got so mixed up by associating Christ and Jesus. Jesus Christ is one thing. 2,000 years ago, it was Steiner who first spotted this one. 2,000 years ago, the cosmic Christ experienced manhood by, for three years, the last three years of, of Jesus' life, stepped in and took over Jesus' soul. Jesus pulled out and lived. And what's speaking in the Gospel of John is God, is the Christ. And the Christ in this sense, clearing it, this mixture of Jesus Christ, that's the difficulty now, the Christ is this love principle of God. And the second coming is not the reappearance of Jesus but is the reappearance of the Christ which took over Jesus. But now it's not taking over a single person, but it's flooding so that it can fill any soul that opens itself to it. It's in this room, everywhere. It's everywhere. But most of us were so closed down in our own... Um. How did, he, how, how did he choose? Did, did he choose? Did he know that this was going to happen? It just Is it something that just happened to him? You know, did he work on it himself in the, it, up until the age of 30? You, you're saying that the Christ yeah, sort of Jesus. like... Yeah, Jesus. The Christ sort of came to him. He searched, he searched for God. Jesus searched for God, oh. and by, as to use old-fashioned words, by the mercy of the God. Okay, so I'm, I'm ignorant of the life of Jesus, you see, and it's just interesting, like, it's almost like it, it came to him, just like that. Did he not have to work at it, or...? Well, try now to get it again. As I say, don't question it and say you can't believe it. You'll just... It's quite a different way of belief. You haven't got to believe this, mm. but you can watch whether you, soul or mind, responds. The certain things you respond, ooh, wonderful. Yeah. That must be true. Yeah. And then critical left hemisphere says, oh, come off it, you can't prove that. Call yourself an intelligent person, you think you can. And of course, the answer is, of course I can't prove it. Mm. I'm not interested in proving it. Mm. But something in my soul knows. Mm. This is thrilling, this is exciting. And therefore the proposition that at the age of 30, the personality of Jesus stood down and into that prepared vehicle, a divine cosmic being of love, who is the Christ, mm. took over. And what's his spoken? in the Gospel of John is that being and the others are preparatory for that final thing. And we found someone that found a wonderful picture, Renaissance picture, the whole picture of two Jesus children, two Jesus young men, and uh, that at the age of 30 they found somewhere in Italy that Jesus enthroned, but there's a ghostly boy being led away at the side of the picture, sad and rather tra becoming transparent, led out of the picture. It's quite clearly got the conception there which Steiner has borne out, that there were two Jesus children, and that uh, in the sense that one of them is the Christ and one of them is the one that prepared the vehicle. And the Christ, the entry of the Christ is not Jesus Christ was born on Christmas Day. No, that Jesus was born on Christmas Day. 
but at the age of 30, at the baptism of Jordan, that Jesus being stood down for the Christ being to take over. And for these last three years, as I talked about in John, it is the heart principle of God. You see, Christ is the actual heart love of God. Is not just a person like Jesus. It's the whole principle of love. And the second coming, that's what makes our age so exciting. Towards the end of an epoch, there's bound to be change of some sort in the next 30 years or so. At the end, imposes on nobody. Now if you could come and fill this room for you what message now is suddenly for just like it's a sign. <laughs> um, you see how thrilling the notion is. And actually now what can we into the time when cosmic love, which is Christ, the Christ impulse is love, is the heart of God, is launching love into the world. And of course it's everywhere flooding through, but it will never impose. I mean, it'll come up against you and find you all so filled, filled up with self that uh, it'll run round you, or not. I'll give you a little, a wonderful little page that I discovered for just two, two verses. If thou couldst empty all thyself of self, like to a shell disheveted, then might he find thee on an ocean shelf, and say, this is not dead, and fill thee with himself instead. But thou art so replete with very thou, and hast such shrewd activity, that when he comes, he'll say, It is in now unto itself, to I better let it be. It is so small and full, and has no need. I sent that to somebody on a Christmas card and then I thought, well, good, good, good. what right have I to write to that chap and say that thou art so repeat for very thou? So anyway, I put, I rounded it off saying, so will I empty all myself of self like to a shell disheveled? Then will he find me on an ocean shelf and say, this is not dead and fill me with himself instead? Now this is the second coming. And if we can, the individual soul can open itself to this flooding of love. The second coming is love. It's not life, light and darkness and that sort of thing isn't the issue, but it's love. And love is what the meaning of the Christ is. And that goes beyond what often enough where the church has got to, but I'm not to say more on that there, but it's a the real New Age feature is this realization that the dynamic love is flowing. And the mere fact that there's a hell of a lot of violence going on proves nothing. And that, of course, is that's the old, old world working itself out. But if you really begin to look at it, the amount of real love that is flowing 
is tremendous. And barrier is breaking down of all sorts. The mere fact that we sit here and, uh, and talk in this way. That's, all that's not newsworthy though, is it? Say again? That's not newsworthy for the people who make the news. They don't concentrate on that, do they? No, indeed no. Therefore, this is a much more secret, quiet thing. Yeah. But the, this is the New Age movement. Yeah. This is a real New Age movement. Mm. And uh, uh, I can talk this stuff to, to an audience of 100, and uh, I mean, uh, within our movement, that's it. Uh, that's what's coming. And it's now very wide, and uh, every kind of way of getting at this understanding. And it's lovely. Oh, that's the right word. It is love. It is loving love that's flooding. For those who can take it. And that does mean, of course, that if there are, are changes, and there could be as changes, but we needn't bother about that now, because we've got the thing that matters there. Lots of souls would you lose their bodies. Well, that's all right. They're all right. Uh, wonderful planets that they can go to, what other things they can do. But what matters is that in whatever changes come, we turn to the Christ, understanding that that is not, repeat, not Jesus Christ. That is that which manifests 3,000 years ago in Jesus and is manifesting now in sheer love which can fill your heart and mind. And a new human relationship begins to link a war between us.